Chapter 9 is an interesting chapter in that it deals with the, the non-spoken, silence, time, uh, pauses, facial expressions, all the non-verbals out there. And it's amazing how much um, we communicate without even speaking. There are, and that's one of the magic things I think about radio and uh, taking an online course. You can't see the person's face. You don't know if they're, when they make a statement, if they're kidding. Uh, but you can tell maybe something by the pitch of my voice. Uh, I'll, I, I may say to you, I'm kidding. But chapter nine is an excellent read, if for no other reason that it then that it sensitizes us to be aware of nonverbal signals and other uh, associated uh, elements of nonverbal communication. So let's look at a few of these uh, examples. So there we've got the key ideas, facial expressions, uh, body language. They, they and, and there's different meanings given to different uh, cultures by um, nonverbals, body language especially. Um, for example, in some cultures, showing someone the bottom of your feet or shoes is... Uh, an, an insulting thing. It would be sort of like, uh, you know, myself having taught for a, a while, I see someone in a class, physically in a class, and they're all kind of slumped down. They're kind of like a puppet where the strings are cut. And they're just slumped down. They haven't said a word. They're looking at their iPad or their computer. Um, their message to me is, again, they haven't spoken a word. They don't make eye can't, uh, contact with me is they're totally and utterly disengaged from the conversation that's going on or the classroom activities. Uh, I've often said, and maybe incorrectly, but I can tell within the first, uh, for sure, hour of a class whether someone is going to succeed. Now, this is a face-to-face -face course, mind you, a traditional classroom environment, if someone's going to succeed or not, just by the level of attention and the body language that they transmit. Now, that is culturally biased. I mean, we're talking about domestic students here. Um, but without a doubt, it, I've been pretty successful at it. I can, I can tell, I mean, I probably got a 99 percentile um, in the accuracy of you know, picking winners from losers. Now, that may be different, or there may be differences among cultures. I guess the... Uh, the moral of the story, to jump to the end, is to do the due diligence and investigate <clears throat> what may be um, proper or improper body language. But it creates an identity, it expresses in st in internal states. People that constantly look like they're sitting on a tack or they're just annoyed, haven't said a word, always sort of creates anxiety in a communications uh, environment. But that nonverbal interaction, repeat, the messages, substitutions for words. There's lots of functions for nonverbals. There's a good definition. Um, they might be unintentional. I mean, I, t I have a son that's uh, 14. I always tell him, please sit up straight, um, stand straight, you know, your shoulders back, looking straight ahead. Uh, now, around here, even this is going to vary from place to place, from a metro area to a more rural area that we live in, people expect us to make eye contact, even on the street, to say hello. Big cities, that may be uh, less enthusiastically received. That might be seen as a threat or um, uh, uncharacteristically bold. So, you know, even, you know, being situationally aware is, uh, is a good idea and ed educating yourself. But um, it's hard to separate the messages. Okay, it's hard to separate what you're seeing from what you're hearing or not hearing. I think it's a fascinating study. There are books written. I've got one that I've, I've read about half of it, I suppose, about nonverbal communication, how to read people. And it was written by a law enforcement person. And uh, it is very interesting. Um, I think it would take a fair amount of practice to understand that body language. But it's it's, it's uh, if nothing else, it's fun to read and understand. You know, your appearance, uh, kinesics, 
I, don't, I hope I'm saying that correctly, or kinetics, or kinesis, kinesics, probably more correct, you know, body movement, how you, how you move and things like that. Um, whether you touch somebody when you speak to them or not, whether that's taboo or not, or you, you aren't, shouldn't, shouldn't do that. I'd say in most business situations anymore, uh, putting your hand on somebody's shoulder as you speak to them is probably, sadly, not a good idea. I mean, I don't do that with stu I used to do that with students, um, you know, 10 years ago maybe, but there is no way in God's green earth I'm going to do that now. Um, so body movement, without a doubt, is important. Personal space and distance. Some cultures speak to each other, and we would call them close talkers, which tends to make us back up in Western civilization. We need about a three foot at least distance between us unless <clears throat> there's some loud noises going on then you might lean into somebody just to hear them but by and large you know I want arm's length for sure other regions cultures don't they see that as maybe overly a standoffish as the name implies but there's different difference between business distance and social distance time the idea of punctuality western uh, you know northern european ideas of time mean and look at it as the exact measure i look at on time as being 10 minutes ahead uh, and ready to go so the meaning doesn't s start when you get there and you take all your stuff out and then 10 minutes later if you're supposed to begin at nine you're ready to go at nine that's how i look at it not all cultures look at it that way. And not all business cultures, even within an organization, there's looser definitions of it. Um, but it is a, that's a touchy subject in some cases. And there might have to be some clear, very clear communication to uh, remedy that situation um, on both parts. So if you're over there, if you're somewhere where they have a looser definition of time, you, you know, try not to be offended um, on the, Flip side of the coin, if you're if they're going to work for you, you might want to inform them, hey, when it says nine, you better be there before nine. You know, shoot for five, hopefully, t oh, shoot for ten, maybe get five, and you're ready to roll. Silences or the length of a silence is another area uh, we in Western civilization tend to get nervous is with overly long silences. Um, that takes some real discipline to ignore. Not all bad, um, but it is, uh, you know, those awkward silences, as they're called, can be uh, distracting for sure. So, uh, there we go. There's a few, you know, about Buddhism. Many people feel uncomfortable with the absence of noise contaminate experience, so on and so forth. Again, educate yourself. Hindu, so some of the, the cultural uh, connections are very deep and very old. So again, you'll want to um, be aware at the very minimum of those things. Mon you're going to monitor your nonverbal signals. <clears throat> Watch and practice. Go on the internet and find... Um, you know, I, I've given you a few resources, but there's likely many, many more that you can uh, access as far as shows interaction between two people from a different culture. Monitor, be aware, self-awareness is part of it. And at the bare minimum, I challenge you to read a book on nonverbal communication and reading body language here uh, locally, domestically. I think it will do you well. Okay, there's chapter nine.